In this lecture, we dive more deeply into the low-cost provider strategy and how that is utilized within organizations in order to compete. Essentially, one can either look at um, low-cost strategies that are difficult for competitors to imitate, and also you want to try and lower your costs without lowering the quality of your product. An example of this reducing your costs, you can see companies like Amazon that are trying to do these drone deliveries and things. They're trying to reduce their cost but without hurting the product quality, whatever it is that they're selling. Clearly, <clears throat> whenever you're able to reduce your costs across the board, you're able to potentially increase your profits and have more of an opportunity to make money, but at the same time have more flexibility in reducing your prices in order to maintain your market share and to target competition. Whenever you have product profits, additional profits, you have more money that you can spend to, again, create initiatives that might reduce your cost and allow you to lower your pricing as well. Um, in the low-cost market, there is a tendency when people compete there, they continue to cut prices, and there can be a lot of uh, value leakage from the cost from the prop from the uh, producers or the companies into consumers as there are these price wars. So that's the downside risk of the low-cost provider strategy. But also, typically, once you're able to establish the low-cost position. Oftentimes, one can start to raise your prices in order to become um, even more profitable as other competitors leave the marketplace. It's just not profitable for them if you're able to have a lower cost structure. So your basic position is that you enter the market and you create a, a, an operation that has lower cost than anybody else. Lower wage costs, lower supplier costs, lower channel costs lower operating costs, lower energy costs, all the various things where you possibly can, can, can achieve that, and particularly looking at the areas that you have some potential to have a differentiated or a better way of lowering cost than anyone else might. Perhaps of locating your warehouses closer to the customers than anyone else can do. That can reduce your cost. Cost drivers, this kind of strategic analysis, you look for what's driving your costs. You do that by going deeply into financial statements like we talked about in the past and we discuss in more detail in the financial um, analysis module. Um, you look into the financial statements for various products and operations and locations and everything and identify what the cost drivers are. Cost drivers are those things that influence your cost. Perhaps it's labor cost, perhaps it's transportation cost, perhaps it's energy cost. If gasoline prices go up, that increases your it's a cost driver if you have a lot of distribution and it's trucks and trains and cars and that sort of thing that are driving your, your um, co uh, part of your cost structure, those can have a very significant effect. So that's what you're trying to understand. What is it? Where do you focus your energy? Just saying that our costs are too high doesn't really help in terms of creating initiatives. Remember, you're trying to analyze all this data so you could point people in the direction of doing some work to improve your strategic position, which in the low-cost provider case means make your cost structure lower. Cut costs out of your business. Remove energy costs if you can. Remove human resource costs if you can. Remove equipment costs if you can. Those sorts of things. So you want to, and you could go to your suppliers and have them charge you less, like in energy. You can negotiate a better price if you're very broad. In terms of your position, you're a very strong buyer from a particular supplier. Remember the five forces model, now you're the buyer. You can exert power and reduce your cost. You can also um, um, have only limited product, not a lot of variability. That can reduce your inventory costs. If you don't have, um, if you're starting to produce only standard products, then you don't have to have a lot of excess inventory. You have only a few products, then it's easier to maintain or manage your inventory if you think about it. Um, various strategies like that are where you would tend to focus your internal energy as you are developing your strategic initiatives. You want to make sure that no competition, <clears throat> none of your competitors, meet you in the marketplace and are, have, a, have a lower cost position in any of these dimensions than you do. And then otherwise, they can use that advantage in order to lower prices and hurt your profitability and drive you out of their marketplace. This particular chart has some, um, 
some examples of cost drivers. We mentioned a few of them. Um, economies of scale we haven't talked about. If you're a large operation, remember, economies of scale allow you to price or to add incremental um, output at a lower cost because you already have purchased all the equipment and you already have returns on all that equipment. And so, therefore, you're able to just, just um, add additional product and service at a lower incremental cost or a marginal cost, which your competitors might not be able to do. Um, all of these uh, pieces, reducing your inputs, what you're paying for your suppliers or your raw materials, these are all ways that you can look into your financial statements, look into your business operations, and start telling that this, this factory, you need to reduce your energy costs. And that becomes a target. Um, when you look into your distribution operation, you need to have spend less money on fuel costs, or you need, in other words, you have, you need to become more efficient in packing your trucks and pack and, and shipping in the right directions, and not have have material go out to the warehouses and then be returned because all of that adds to your cost. You go through and you identify all these various cost drivers and reduce costs across the board. So a strategy of low cost <clears throat> low cost provider leads specifically to certain types of methods that become strategic initiatives. You might um, become more effective in terms of uh, consolidating some of your operations. You may want to, in, in creating economies of scale, you might want to have more focus around the operations that are becoming, uh, that, are, uh, that are more efficient in their operations and start bringing some additional work there. You might want to make sure that all of your your facilities are full capacity. You don't want three warehouses that are half full when you can have one warehouse that's 100% full. That And you look very deeply into the various parts of your operation in order to identify how you can reduce costs all across the board because any one of those one items might be identified as a com for by a competitor who's also reducing all their costs and they may be able to use that in order to um, compete with you effectively. You might want to be able to use communication systems, so you move information around rather than moving materials around. Uh, one of the most uh, significant advances in the latter part of the 20th century, early 21st century, is in logistics operations where companies like uh, Walmart get information from their stores about what's being sold that goes all the way back through the distribution channel, all the way back to their suppliers, so suppliers know what to ship to the warehouses and which warehouse needs the materials. All that is in information processing. So that things that are man manufactured by suppliers get sold and through the distribution system to the, where to the, the um, Walmart stores with, with minimal amount of, um, you might say, friction or wait time. They just go, go to the warehouse immediately or very, very quickly in a number of days get shipped to the stores that need them and they're sold off the shelf within days uh, to reduce the, uh, the inventory cost. So there's all sorts of op opportunities to reduce cost, and that becomes what your business focuses on strategically, is to lower cost in operations, in sales, in service, in customer service, all of those kinds of things that you're working on. Uh, becoming more advanced in technology, uh, looking at advantages from other places where you might be able to outsource to somebody some operation like distribution. You might get um, uh, UPS to do some of your distribution for you in places where it's not cost effective to do it yourself. And becoming more and more motivational, you tell your employees that their salaries and their activities are based upon, or their, their raises are based upon how well they're able to manage these cost cutting, cost containment type of activities and operations. They have a whole set of strategic initiatives around being efficient, being effective, and being the low-cost provider. Those are the sorts of things that you want to think about all across your value chain, not just internal to your company, but in your suppliers as well as in the areas of your supply chain. Getting your sales force, perhaps make the company website more effective, uh, getting your operations all the way along the value chain so that you eliminate all the work steps, that you reduce the materials handling costs, the things that we were just talking about, uh, some ways that you can improve your overall operation. Bottom line is you have to be have a low-cost edge over your comp competition with this strategy because as long as you're at the low end on the cost, 
No matter what your competitors do with pricing, you'll be able to respond and defend your position. If you're not low cost, then there is a potential that you cannot respond. They can cut their prices if they're lower cost, and you cannot make money. And so you have to go out of business. And that's the essential principle whenever you're trying to run a low cost strategy. This is effective when price competition is very, very severe in certain businesses, when products are essentially are, are pretty much identical. If you're selling soaps or wash, uh, you know, uh, kitchen uh, wares or you're selling uh, paper products or whatever, um, products are very similar. You have to be low cost or else your competitor will come in and start to, to lower their prices so you can't compete and take you out of the marketplace. You can't differentiate these products. Buyers use the products in the same ways. There's no differentiation in how products are being used. They have um, they have low cost. Whenever they can they can buy your product or buy someone else's product. Uh, these um, if there's a uh, if there's a lot of sales being made and there's only a couple major players. Um, these they tend to fight for those those sales and try to maintain market share. Um, and also, if new people coming in can introduce low prices and um, essentially own market share, there's not a lot of loyalty among customers, if you will. These are where low-cost provider strategies are often used because you are in a position with low cost to defend the market share that you've gained over time. This is how you win when you have price-sensitive buyers. And there is a floor on it. They, they are the ones that decide on what they're willing to pay based upon they can go to anyone, essentially. That's when this kind of a process works. Um, it doesn't necessarily, price reducing prices doesn't necessarily lead to higher products, higher profits, because you also have the cost element. So you have to make sure that those added sales you get by lowering prices in, in situations where you're the low-cost providers, and you sell enough more that the overall profits increase. So this becomes a strategy where you really have to understand the dynamics of your sales, your overall cost structure. You have to make sure your competitors don't have a way that they could compete and make more money than you with the same price, and you have to make sure that you're that you're managing your pricing so that you continue to be profitable, so that you have the cash to move forward and continue to succeed. Um, you're always trying to do this by not making your product worthless to this consumer. It's easy when you're cutting costs all the time that your product eventually takes away all of its value and customers no longer think of your product as being the best. So that's what you want to be thinking about. You start to become just milk toast in a marketplace where people are wanting something that is much that has at least some sweet to it, uh, and you're just not there. Then you start to price yourself out of the market. In the next lecture, we'll talk about product differentiation, which is exactly to this point of making sure the products, each product, people want your version of it. You want a Coca-Cola rather than a Pepsi for some reason because you're able to differentiate your product. Even though it, it might not be a different physical product, you've done it with attributes or with style or something like that. So in the next lecture, we'll talk about broad differentiation.